Good morning. It's Lisa Copeland coming to you live from this lovely suite in New York City in the financial district at 15 minutes of fierce. I actually got this thing to work, but I'm going to give you all a full disclosure. Dan's on here. We've been talking for about 10 minutes and we're, as he would say, buffering, but it looks like you're back, Dan. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing fantastic. Uh, well, <laughs> Cup first of all, coffee. Yeah, I want to thank you because Dan is out on the West Coast. So where it's 745 in the morning, which is what I one of the million things I love about the East Coast. I, I pick up an hour, at least in my brain. Um, Dan is on Pacific time at 445 in the morning. So thank you so much. But I, I had to get you on here. I want to talk hey, about I want to talk I'm excited about to be on. Well, thank you. And I, I want to say thank you uh, yesterday to my fantastic um, step in host, Dr. Natalie Phillips. You crushed it, girlfriend. I, I watched the show a couple of times. Thank you. Thank you. It's hard to do a show on the road. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. I got Anthony and Aiden on here and you guys will see I'm on a different format. Chris Walsh, Mark, Greg. That's only the format for the road, just so you know, because I, I've got a PC on the road. So um, anyways, so Fridays, I like to talk about business individuals that have done something that the rest of us, most of us, I should say, haven't done. I think that's fair, Dan. You know, you okay. are a okay. bootstrap entrepreneur. You put together um, Vista Dash. You, and, uh, I know you've got some partners on that. <clears throat> and then you sold the company and you sold it to grow it. And as you like to say, to have more tools or no, excuse me, have more toys in the toy box. So um, you're a great friend of mine, and I'm just so proud of you. And any, I mean, it's a really big deal to bootstrap, start a company, and then become acquired. And you're staying on as the president of the company. So I'm going to let you tell the rest of the story while I sip my coffee. <laughs> well, well, thanks. Well, thanks. You know, it's, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely it's exciting to be on. Uh, yeah, you know, so the, the adventure started um, a few, not even two years ago. I mean, I've actually been with Vista. It'll be two years in February just to kind of start that ride. So um, previously I was at Cox Automotive. I'd been five years with Cox Automotive and uh, longtime friends with Brian Pash and, and Glenn Pash. And, you know, at that time I was kind of uh, looking to get back to that uh, entrepreneurial spirit of building and, um, you know, just being free of, of some of the corporate stuff. Um, Cause corporate I wanted to move. Stuff. Yeah, corporate stuff. You know, it, it, sometimes. What's up with that? You know, I feel like you and I talked about that last night. It's like, do you have to wear pantyhose? Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, well, you know, they, they, they have big boxes of Legos, but they only tell you which Legos you can play with. And that makes me sad because um, right. I love Legos, as many of you watching know that. Um, those that don't, you just learn something. But it, it was funny talking to Brian, um, who, who had ROI bought at the time. Uh, we got to talking and, you know, it just made sense. I love data and I love digital marketing. And so with that, it kind of came out with Vista Dash. Um, I came over right after NADA two years ago and um, it's been a fun ride. Now, you know, great partners. I've enjoyed the time with the, uh, with the Pash brothers. We've had some fun um, and it's been a great partnership because we all have um, different strengths and, and different ways of how we approach business. So um, well, okay, so, so Dan, I, I want you to talk about that because yeah. that is a unique situation to have two brothers as partners, which they're super smart guys, very, very strong in the technology piece, as are you. How did you guys navigate that relationship? Um, you know, it almost came natural, which was great. Um, you know, both of them just kind of, as I say, handed the keys to the house and let me go, which, I, I mean, that in and of itself is a rare thing. Everybody, um, you know, a lot of challenges that people face is, Everybody wants a vested stake, even a little bit ego at times. Um, hey, look what I did. Uh, but none of that existed. And I think that's really what accelerated Vista and really helped us go. Brian has always been you know, a, a steward of the industry, educating dealers, um, challenging the industry, uh, wow. whether they love him or hate him, but he challenged standardization. So he led that charge. Um, Glenn um, you know, still had the agency doing some consulting. And then um, both Glenn and I are very uh, uh, tactical. Uh, it was kind of a fun buffer because I can go tactical with Glenn. And so we would look at day to day. We would look at budgets. We would look at all of that. And then Brian and I would go, you know, vision. We would brainstorm, figure out better ways. How do we push Vista? So it really created a good synergy and really opened the reins for me to go out there and, 
and, and push um, some amazing relationships that really, I think, catapulted Vistadash. And, and I would say, you know, two of the biggest ones is um, one of our partnership with Media Monitors. Those guys really kind of embraced us like family and helped us get going. Um, and, and so it wasn't, you know. Okay, it looks like we have a little buffer. Dan will be back in a minute, guys. I promise we've, we've been working on this all morning. Um, yeah, but if any of you guys have not checked out Vista Dash, um, it's really cool. It's a dashboard that helps provide car dealers with analytics. Are you back, Dan? I think so. Okay, good. <laughs> I've already warned everybody up front. We got a little buffer yep. going on, but this is it, good it's stuff. Always a little, little buffering. Uh, but again, you know, kind of back to summing it up is, is just about understanding where everybody falls in their swim lanes and leveraging those strengths and pushing forward. You know, too many times we get hung up on, on weakness and what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. Um, and, and I think this is kind of a testament to it. I mean, we're less than two years. Uh, we were able to get acquired. Uh, we made enough, you know, beat the drum loud enough and, and caught some attention. Um, so all of that is a, you know, a plus. And now for me coming over uh, with the car work. Okay, we got that buffer working again. You guys stick with us. Dan will be back any second. Not only lift. Oh, good. Now he's back. Yep. So, okay. again, I always like buffering. It's like Mr. Roboto. <laughs> uh, but, again, it, it's – it's some people sell because it's like, hey, I just want to get rich and retire. You know, I love what I do. Nothing wrong I, with I that, love... Dan. Nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. I, I mean, everybody has a different end game. My, my end game is to keep going. You know, I love what I do. This whole data set, um, call me a big geek, whatever. It's fun. And there's so much, uh, you know, so much to find in so many ways that we can continue to help dealers. So that, okay, that's really so, what we're so for you, Let me ask you. So for those that don't know, and shame on you if you don't, just kidding. Tell us what Vista Dash is. All of us industry insiders know it. Um, but tell everybody else, and there's a lot of people on here. Uh, Michelle M Michelle McLean says, good stuff. The startup struggle is real. No joke, right, sister? And Frank <laughs> Lopes, good morning. I'm in your country, Frank Lopes. I'm in the I'm in the financial district in, in New York. Um, I want to see you and your wife, and congratulations on your new house. It looks beautiful. Anyways, but tell us what Vista Dash is, Dan. Tell us what it is, why it exists, yeah. and the benefit it brings to automotive dealers. Yeah, so Vistadash quite simply is a marketing intelligence platform. What it does is it takes everything from um, all of the marketing sources that a dealer has to work with inside their dealerships, brings it into a single platform, uh, and it helps provide actionable insights. Uh, one of one of our strengths too is just not only having a, you know a, as I say a shiny dashboard um, is we have market uh, strategists that work with dealers on a monthly basis to find those nuggets to figure out where the money um, is generating good ROI and where it's not. And, you know, sometimes it's not just about it was a bad provider. It was either A, you didn't have the right inventory or B, you know, the, where, you, uh, where you were landing them was horrible. It wasn't the marketing. It was just, hey, your website, this particular page wasn't working. So when you really get down to the mechanics and that's what we help solve is where were the breaks in the marketing um, and, and where are the opportunities? I like that. I mean, well, so Frank Lopes just said that Dan calls himself a data geek, but he's more of a data ninja. I think I think you need to adopt Data Ninja. This is this is why Lopes is such a great uh, marketing guy. Yeah, only Lopes would say that because he knows how much I hate those things. Um, I'm just a student. <laughs> well, no, it's funny because I, I love Lopes. We're we're like brothers, and he he's just drilling me right now because <laughs> I always say I'm just a student of the game. I, I don't want to take a, a badge of any type because that's just not who I am. Um, you know, I'm here to help and and you know obviously help dealers, but help other people in the industry. I mean. You know, I, I give about five hours a week, an hour a day of just grabbing the phone and helping whoever needs help. Our strategy calls that are not even related to what I do. Just if I can help someone, that's what it's about. Yeah, and that's what it is about. And I think that's what you're known for in the industry. And I think that's fantastic. So let me tell you, you know, all of us, I say all of us, I shouldn't say that. Um, we're entrepreneurs, many of us on this show. What was the scariest thing about stepping away from corporate America, right? I mean, we've all done it stepping away from corporate America and saying, you know what, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to dream big and I'm going to believe in me because, you know, you had to believe in yourself. I mean, it's it's great. You had fantastic partners in the Posh Brothers, but they weren't going to get it done for you. So what tell us what that felt like, you know, the night that you made the decision or the day you made the decision that, you know, that, that, that you're going to you're going to bet on you, you personally. I'm building this company. Oh, that's a good one. So I don't know, there's, thank there's, you. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> oh, you're getting really good. Uh, well, this one sings to me because 
it was a few different pieces. Like, A, I have an amazing wife. So first it starts with family. If they're not on board, I'm not going anywhere because I'm never going to leave the dock. So kudos to my wife for the love and support. Um, and then there was another piece. There, there was a gentleman that um, I happened to be out in Miami. And I was sitting on his balcony. We were talking about change. And I just got done reading his book. Um, and, and when I say the book, Be Obsessed, Be Average, obviously that will connect the dots to Grant Cardone. So having the opportunity to talk to Grant and go, hey, here's where I'm at in life. I read the book. It's really, it's really talking to me. It's so I would tell you, you know, it's a fantastic book. But it was that point in my life where you just hit that intersection. And you're like, boom, it all clicks and goes. And that's what it was for me in this particular one. Because, hey, corporate America is great. You get it. Your, your check always shows up, right? There, yep. There's so much Cash. politics. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and transparency. In some cases, for a very high energy entrepreneur that just kind of wants to go, you can kind of hit the idle button and just show up. And it's like you're giving 100% on idle. So if you just like to collect a check, sometimes corporate's not a bad thing. But, um, you know. But for you, Dan. That way. Um, but, Okay, so I'm sorry, you're you're freezing up again. Gosh darn yep. it. Okay, sorry. I think you're back. So keep keep yep. talking. So talk about that fear. Talk about. I mean, did you ever have that self doubt where you went, God, I can't believe I just did this? You know, take take me back to the womb of corporate America, or did you hit the ground running and never looked back? Um, you know, it's funny. I hit the ground running. Um, it, it's one of those moments where I, I think it was timing. I was in the right frame of mind, right place. Um to where I just hit the, I didn't look back. Uh, and it even references to, you know, a lot of times people go, well, who's your competition? I go, it's us. If I look at who's, who I'm competing with, I'm just going to end up falling back. Um, so I just keep looking forward. If someone's better than us, okay, fine. Right, so I think it's like with any product or service, you know, they're, 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 there's always gonna be somebody bigger and at some, you know, better, better funded or whatever. But I think as long as you do you, um, okay, so we are we are coming to the end of the show at 15 minutes, but give give our audience three takeaways. I mean, I, I'm seeing some of the people on here. Hello, Chris Martinez. Chris, Chris just did something similar th to you with Auto Miner. You know, they they were acquired, or no, excuse me, that they actually sold exclusive licensing rights out to their product. And you know, I mean, it's it's you know, it's a commitment. It's a 24/7 commitment when you decide. So give us three takeaways for somebody out there, whether they're in the automotive industry or not. What what would you recommend them doing if they have a dream and 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 they want to take it and they want to go to market and monetize it? What would, what would be three tips that you would give them today? One, be nice. Mm. And here's what? why. You never know who's going to be rooting for you and will show up when you're underway. And because you were nice previously somewhere, because this is a small, even though it's a big industry, it's still small. And no matter what industry you're in, it's still small. So yeah. be nice. Two, never quit. You're going to get knocked down. It's going to suck. There's days that you'll wake up and go, why am I doing this? Get up. Keep moving forward. Three, collaborate. Reach out to people. Somebody can help you. Don't Even if they're their comp your competition in your mind, they can help you. I always talk to people. I never go, oh, I shouldn't talk to them. They're my competition or what. Hey, listen, if you can align and you can build partnerships and, and grow faster, then do it. Those are my three. Yeah, and I, I could not agree with you more. So number one is to be nice. You know, be nice. You know, collaborate, right? Take, take, take the phone calls. Have the conversations. You know, it doesn't hurt. And, you know, there's a lot of people on this stream that, that were in the auto industry that I didn't even know when I was a car dealer. And now I know them way better and we're great friends. You being one of them, Dan Moore, um, you know, because of the spirit of collaboration. OK, everybody, well, as a respecter of time, it is bouncing right up on seven o'clock central, eight o'clock eastern. So I'm going to remind you guys and I know I'm wearing you out, but starting on Monday, this show is going to start coming off of and only off of at speaker Lisa Copeland, at speaker Lisa Copeland. They're putting, they are, they are taking away my crack, which is my personal Facebook page of highly engaged people 
and making me build out farther that um, business page. So please do not let me get on Monday and nobody's on it. Turn on your notifications. You have to like the page at Lisa, excuse me, at speaker Lisa Copeland, at speaker Lisa Copeland. Uh, I'm going to go continue enjoying New York. Dan, thank you so much for getting up at the crack of dawn uh, to join us today, to tell us your story, to encourage everybody. You know, and I like to say, if Dan can do it, you can do it. <laughs> right? Hey, we're all humans. Point. Anybody all can do human. it. It's just a question of, do you want to go do it? That's right. And, you know, but I do think, you know, what my, my, my big takeaway today is, is because, and because I know this about you, is the spirit of collaboration. You know, you, you know, you can't just have that one big idea and hold it in your little box all by yourself. Um, the only way to grow it, to be great, to build a scalable, huge business is to collaborate and find great people to come around you. And I think that's what you have done. And you have mastered that even more than even, you know, making the acquisition. So congratulations, continued success. I will see all of you Monday at speaker Lisa Copeland. Dan, have you liked at speaker Lisa Copeland and turn on and turned on your notifications? I, if I have it, I will hear shortly. Okay. At speaker Lisa Copeland. Okay, you guys, I love you. I'm going to go be fierce on the streets of New York. I've got meetings all day today and um, I'm in the financial district. I'm right down the street from Century 21, my favorite store in the entire planet. So anyways, all right. I love you guys. Dan, thank you again, my friend. Continued success. Thank you.